What's up, everyone? Oh, Welcome to <laughs> Epic Battle Cry, the place where we got to the crowd to get to the real deal on the gaming industry today. Happy Tuesday, September 9th. Boy, that announcement by Apple was amazing. Wasn't as, it, though? <laughs> as is the fact that you're playing Destiny right now and listening to us in the background. So much going on today, so we just want to take yeah, no, a few Yeah, nobody minutes. is actually going to listen to this episode. I, I just realized it. We can Literally say whatever no one we will. want, you know, because nobody's going to actually hear this. But <laughs> True um, enough. anyway, September 9th, it's a big day. It's a big month. Today is Tuesday. I um, hope everybody's having a good one. And we're going to dive right into today's podcast with a question from our friend Stephen East um, uh, regarding uh, our if, if we were CEOs, if we were the big kahunas, if we were the big chudakupas that we talked about yesterday, uh, <laughs> what would we do? Stephen asked us, if we were the head of Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, what would you have done differently for each console? Hmm. Tony, interesting. I'm going to start with you. Uh, All right. I know so, you've got uh, opinions on these things, but in terms yeah. of you know the hardware, the launches, are there any glaring things that you would have done differently uh, if you were sitting in the boss man's chair at either sure. of the big three, any of the big three? Rather, I got to be honest. Like, there, there's a couple. I, I think probably the the biggest one for me personally would would probably be Nintendo and the Wii U. Um, in terms of just like the most the, the the biggest change in my opinion, um, in it's it's basically the uh, the gamepad. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't I don't still to this day see that it adds enough to the gameplay to warrant the price of of, of the system. Yeah. You know, like I honestly believe Nintendo Nintendo always sort of feels like they need at least I shouldn't say always in the last two or three console generations. Like, before that, they just made these core systems, and they were great. And and the, and the one system played all these games, and it was awesome. And now they sort of feel like each time they have to do something different. They can't just make good games on a normal platform. It's got to have motion controls. It's got to have 3D. It's got to have an extra game pad that you can see stuff on the second screen. I mean, like, I, I, somehow all the other game manufacturers don't have a lot of those things and seem to do, I don't know, better than them yeah. in a lot of cases, you know? And I I just, I don't, I've never really understood... Th- th- because it's a, it's obviously a very trying expensive a bit, piece of hardware. They're trying like a little bit too hard to differentiate themselves. Yeah. Well, that, but also just from their standpoint, like they're always about maximizing profitability. Yeah. They, they, you know, they almost never lose money on hardware. You know, that that's one of the few differences between them and some of the other uh, manufacturers. And frankly, is one of the reasons why they still are in good money is because they, they don't lose money right. on their hardware like a lot of other people do and then have to make it up later. You know, they kind of, yeah, right. even though they may not sell as many systems, uh, a lot of times they still tend to make money on those systems they do sell. But anyway, but for something like that, where most people have said that the cost of like the, the gamepad is something around like the hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range, mm-hmm. you know, for all for the screen and the you know wireless and all the stuff that has to be built into it. Imagine if you cut that amount of price mm-hmm. off of the Wii U mm-hmm. and packaged it with like a pro controller instead. Yeah. I, to me, I mean, everyone would own that. Yeah, I, I just, I don't, I, I just, I don't know. To me, I mean, that seems that, like the biggest. That's about half the price of the console, right there. Is what absolutely, you're absolutely, and that's with the price marked down. Yeah, you know, right. the, since, since it's kind of come down since launch. Like, I, to me, that that's the most biggest, obvious, most glaring thing. I got to be honest. The other two platforms. Real, realistically, currently, I think are actually pretty solid. I mean, Microsoft obviously fixed the big glaring problem with theirs, which is the the mandatory, uh, you know, connect bundle with it. Which I, right. I just again, and the it's another thing. Price point. Exactly. And, you know, they, they brought the price point down, which, you know, I don't even think was horrible to begin with. I mean, anytime a new console launches, it's it's usually expensive. But, I mean, they forcing you to get this this piece of equipment that they say is mandatory, and then very quickly you realize that, man, And that not last generation mandatory. proved overwhelmingly nobody was all that interested in. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and, and for the people that are interested in it, they're going to start selling it separately. You know, I, I, they may have even already started, but I, I know it's supposed to happen pretty soon. But anyway, that's that, that's the thing there. And I got to be honest, I, I sort of feel like Sony has, and, and, and I think you can look at the numbers that they have and point to it and say, I, I don't necessarily think that there is a lot that, that they're lacking. I mean, if, if anything, they're just lacking games. Right. I don't feel like the platform, the, the system itself, like when you go out and buy the system and hook it up, it's it's, you know... I, it, it's it's small. It's powerful. Um, you know, after the the new you know firmware updates that are coming, the 2.0 update they just announced at, at the Japan 
presser that's going to be you know adding like themes and all kinds of new things like they're they're tweaking it but i don't think it really had any problems to, right. to begin with right. you know what, what do you guys think Brand? um i would have to say that I, I i don't i don't feel like i've got enough of uh, kind of similar to yesterday's question i don't feel like i've got enough of a grounding to like really give like nintendo notes i mean i, I can look at the situation and say you know they're they're not doing it as as great a job as they can, but you know, you know I, I don't know I don't know that I could suggest anything beyond like you know what you're saying other than just I don't know uh, you know feeling like feeling like you know you're right and that they they've kind of gotten focused on on kind of kitschy hardware features as opposed to just really settling themselves on making terrific terrific games uh, right. that differentiate them from you know from other console makers slash developers because yeah. you know just in the amount of time that i've been playing the 3ds really hardcore this year nintendo is capable of making amazing amazing games yeah right uh and and, and i think that that in and of itself is enough of a is enough of a selling point at least for the gamer audience <clears throat> perhaps yeah. the the kind of the kitschy features and things are, are designed to bring in maybe more mainstream people because they had such success with the wii uh, and and kind of non gaming crowds, you know, perhaps that you know they're feeling like, well, you know, if we if we have a, enough of just kind of a uh, of a neato factor, we'll mm-hmm. draw some of those people in as well. Although I, I don't think that the Wii U sales figures have really proven out that uh, that strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as for the Xbox, I would say that what they could have done differently is basically everything <laughs> that they did. Uh, that they did with the Xbox uh, this year in 2014, they could have yeah. done all that from the start. That that would have been that would have been a, 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 a certainly that would have been a good direction front. for them. As yes, many things yeah. as they ended up changing, if they would have had if they would have had the foresight, if they would have maybe tested done some test marketing with ha- those policies and things, if they they'd have done some just some some hardcore research with their own uh, their own prime demographic and just kind of tested to see how well those things were going to. We're gonna if they had asked over. like one person, I think it would have improved. <laughs> yeah, really. I'm pretty sure they didn't do that. <laughs> well, that's so, the agenda. I, I agree that you know <laughs> Xbox has kind of got their they've got their stuff you know kind of settled. But you know if they would have if they'd had the foresight to just do all that ahead of time, they'd have saved themselves a bunch of a bunch of grief. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, as far as Sony goes, I think that uh, I think probably the biggest thing that I would like to have seen from Sony, although. You know, like this just this depends on how hypothetical you want to get. But personally, I would love to have seen Sony have the PlayStation Now streaming service available on the PS4 on day one with a pretty healthy selection of games and um, and better price and points. way, way better price yeah. points. <laughs> uh, well, and honestly, I don't think that I don't even think better price points is well. Like, I would say that I think that I would have wanted to see an entirely different business model from that. Yeah, I yeah, would want to. I would want to have seen that, that be like an extra, like like an extra premium amount per month or per per year on your PSN Plus subscription. Like PSN mm-hmm. Plus gets you like a little bit of access to PlayStation now, but if you really want to enjoy it, then you you know you're going to have to pay an extra seven dollars a month or. You know, w- yeah, whatever you, the discounted equivalent. You get ten hours is. with your account. Yeah, so, plus, something and then like you that. Add on to or something. Exactly, yeah. something like that, and then like unlimited time. You know, costs yeah. you uh, mm-hmm. more. I, w- I would rather have seen something like that personally. But anyway, or just or just every game they make is free. Yeah, <laughs> just make it all free. <laughs> but no. if if they could have had the PlayStation Now service at launch with the PS4 with a good selection of games and and a, and a and a better uh, a better business model for it, better pricing model for it. Yeah. Um, I think that that would have. I, I think that it would have mitigated the fact that launch lineups suck, and, and that frankly, you know, even now the PlayStation Four uh, game lineup is is pretty weak. Uh, mm-hmm. it, you know, it'll definitely get better as, as we get uh, as we get deeper into the year and closer to October. But I think that that would have offset it a bit and given people, uh, you know, so, so some real next gen kind of kind of joy out of like oh you know oh my god can you know check this out I, like oh i remember playing this game on the playstation one now i could just bloop you know uh yeah i mean they, they could have maybe sold right like here. 10 million systems by this time had they done that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no, <laughs> I, you know, and i i agree with everything <laughs> you guys are saying i mean I'll, I'll go in reverse order and 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 just talk about like i think sony did the least amount of things wrong like they uh, got the I price agree. point right you know they got they got uh, the they messaging didn't try right to force something like move or something like that they yeah. they didn't uh sure they didn't have i mean they had some 
good games and and they still have some good games but that like the price of investing in the system and with services like now and and playstation plus and everything like that i mean you you feel like you're on board with something good for the long haul um so i yeah. think they did the least amount wrong could they have had now out of the gate and doing all the stuff like you're saying brent yes but to me that would have been icing on the uh, on an already pretty tasty cake that I, they, I agree i i agree i don't think i don't think that it's <clears throat> Yeah, I, it's I, not I don't like a deal breaker. It, it's not. You know, it's or, not a critical thing that they right. you know, that they did wrong. Now by any Microsoft stretch. knows they did things wrong, and I, you know, I, this question is, what would you have done different? Obviously. I dropping connect like you said Tony uh, and not forcing that but they stuck by their guns they said it was absolutely essential that this happened and they then lied. to yeah and then to have to go back and pull it just speaks I mean really negatively about things does it mean they can't write the ship no they, they, absolutely they're they're working hard I think I, Phil I Spencer, dare say that they have really that's what I'm saying Phil they Spencer's to be doing done pretty an well amazing right job uh, and they they've really focused on games and and what I credit them for is actually being reactive to the market being reactive to the fact that their initial ideas weren't the best ideas and their willingness to correct it. And I think, as I mentioned, at the time of these changes, that takes huge kahunas on behalf of a company uh, to, to be able huge to do that. Huge if you will. Yeah, <laughs> to Koopas. <laughs> but uh, wh- wh- where I have the biggest problem is with Nintendo because they've not righted the ship. They've not, you know, when, when the Wii U came out, uh, at the time of the Wii U, what everybody was saying was the Wii is good. We've accepted the Wii. We've accepted that we have this different form of control that Nintendo, when you hear a new game is coming out, not only are you looking forward to the game, I'm talking about on the original Wii, you're looking forward to the game, but you're also interested, okay, how well will the controls work? What will they do? What will it be like? In mm-hmm. games like Super Mario Galaxy, like it, it just worked. It was it was simple. It was it was fun. It was great. There's no need really to change from the, that. From the first time you pick up Wii Sports, Sports. Yeah, I mean, you're like, hope, holy shit, so this that fucking was, works. That was their thing, and and they they came with they came with a revolutionary idea. That was the whole premise of the Wii. People are intimidated by the controller. We want to make something that looks like a television remote that invites you to pick it up and that is intuitive to play with. That was the entire crux of everything. What was wrong with the Wii was that it was lacking compared to the 360 and PS3 in terms of graphics and and being able to see all these franchises that we love. So the big thing that everybody was looking forward to was the Wii HD. That's what everybody was talking about. They that to me is what the Wii U really is. But they added, like you were talking about, Tony, this extra, uh, you know, control interface that nobody wanted. That doesn't have the same level of impact that they thought it was going to have. They, I, I do believe that they legitimately thought that just like the Wii U got other people playing games, that this second screen thing was going to be where it's at. Well, guess what? They were wrong. People don't want that or need that to the level that they thought. So being able to just have the control and have things in HD, they would have been fine and they could have killed at the price point like you're talking about by just simply being able to update until they come up with the next innovation. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if they need one. Like if we were still playing Wii games with just HD, like, like, great. Give me the new Zelda. I mean, to be honest, that's what we're playing. Like, like the big games are Mario Kart 8 or Super Smash Brothers, you know, that people are getting excited about. You know, the the Wii U um, Mario games. I mean, like, these are not games that couldn't be done on the Wii, basically. They just wouldn't have looked as good as they do, you know, on the Wii U. I mean, we're playing the same games. Right. And so it's, and from their perspective, they've actually forced, it's like they had, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of thing. And yeah. the easiest thing they could do is just like you said, I mean, go back and consider it a reinvention. You know, hey, here's the the Wii HD or whatever, and, and it plays these games and uses this controller, not the other one with the second screen, and get it in front of people at a really cheap price point and kill it. But they're just Can so just- reluctant to do anything like that. Because I, I, like, I guess I don't know if it's like a cultural thing. Like they have to, yeah, I, they're sticking. Yeah, that. like I think they do sort of see it as like you know, Defe- where somebody like Microsoft sees the, a problem like this and they're like, hey, we just we need to fix it. As soon as we, possible, we're, we we're a multi billion dollar right. business. Yeah. We got to fix it to be back in the game where we where we used to be, and and so that's just what you do. And whereas Nintendo, it's almost I think I think there's possibly is kind of like there's a, a shame in admitting right. that you you know dare, I, you know I don't know I, I don't want to even try to pretend to understand it fully, but like I do think there is some of that real quick though the thing that I don't quite get though is the one thing Nintendo has always been kind of smart about is is sort of 
it, the money aspect, like, yeah. you know, not selling things at a loss. And I think, you know, with these price markdowns they're doing on the Wii U and stuff like that, I think they're, they're starting to lose that thing that they used to have, which is, hey, you know, we need to make money on our system because we're not going to sell as many games right. in general. Right. And you look at, and I actually think they may be moving towards a day where we might see a Wii U without the control pad. And the reason I say that is because all of the big games coming out these days yeah, don't, don't require, require the screen. Yeah. Like most of them you can play with the pro controller or with a, you know, with, with a secondary, you know, controller that you don't have to have the screen on. You look at Super Smash Brothers, they're selling like the, basically the GameCube style controllers with the adapter to play it on your Wii U. So you're playing it with a standard controller if they, uh, for like Mario said, Kart. Tony, for, if they released a Wii U without that with controller, a with controller, with a pro controller, pro controller for yeah. 200 bucks or 175 bucks? Uh, well, that's the thing. Like, you figure right now they're selling it for 100 They're selling it for $300. Right. And the controller- what if they dropped it to $150 oh my God. Or, to, or $200? Fine. Say say $199. At $199, I think it flies off the shelf. And the thing is, the Wii U has picked up in sales. Mm-hmm. Like, it's doing better, but it's doing better based off of the software that's right. coming out. And the, the system is still the, the sort of the anchor that's holding that back. Like, if they could get that moved, yeah. you know, then, then they'd sell even more copies of Mario Kart. Even yeah, more copies totally. of Super Smash Brothers and Zelda and all the you, and you nobody know, the, wants to. I mean, nobody cares about that big ass second screen controller. It's, it's, yeah, I, I, I'm. I, I mean, I'm sure there are people out yeah. there that like it, but I really would challenge them to say, is it is it an absolute necessity? necessity? And would you still want it if you knew that you could get? Basically, the price of two or more games. It doesn't seem like for they that could price. detach that and sell that for ninety nine ninety nine. Absolutely, they, apparently they thing. do. Like if you break yours, you can order them from Nintendo, and I think that's where the hundred and fifty dollar price point has come from. Right. Is because people have inquired, like, hey, if mine ever breaks, what you know what is my do I just I mean, buy a whole new need system? To do is break it up. Just sell the Wii with a pro controller, and <sighs> it's, then the it's, side well, the, controller the thing, though, for one hundred fifty bucks. I mean, it's it, it, I like, agree. And raking in money. If they, if they break it up though, I mean honestly, if it's 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 just like the connect, like the whole reason well, you make yeah, the connect mandatory is to away. try to get better support yeah. for it. The second that you make it optional, the, you know the amount of support that that you're going to have for it goes way down because they know that there's not going to be like a really but, firm built in number of people that have it. But doesn't that prove the point it. in a way <laughs> that nobody wants it? Like yeah, if yeah, you no, break I, it up, I mean, it nobody does, will buy. I'm, it. I'm you just saying that right. you know like. Uh, like, like if you make it separate, you might as well just not do it at all. No, and I agree. I mean, I think you should. I think they should always have it offered, like where you can order it directly through them. Yeah. And essentially, it's like a two week wait because they basically fucking build one right. anytime you order <laughs> it. But like, <laughs> it you. I, I, I think that the same way the connect, like the fact that people did not connects did not fly off of shelves right. when when, when they separate. when they went out. I, well, I take that back. When they very very first came out, they actually kind of did. There there was an initial wave, and I think that was because the Wii was so popular, and right. basically everybody saw this as Their as an as an even Wii. better Wii. And when it kind of realized that it's not really a better version, and plus a lot of the things you like about it is really the games, not right. the, the interaction. Anyway, but like after that initial thing happened, I mean they sat on shelves, yeah. and so like it, the whole point is like once you remove this thing that people don't really want. You're, you're right. Like, why even have it? Because you, but, you've, 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 you've fixed the problem. You fixed the glitch, you fixed, essentially. Not only, but, but not only did you fix the glitch, all your, the only thing you're losing is the fact that you have to swallow your pride because your console now is cheaper to manufacture. You get yeah. a higher profit margin and you sell more of them and you sell I, more software. So it if, is if a you replaced Iwata and move. did that, you would not be swallowing your pride. <laughs> you would be taking the, the company probably, I, I almost think you could be top of the game yeah. if done right. I mean, maybe yeah. not next year. Year, but within a couple years, you could easily be, you know, pushing the the top numbers because you you would have made the smart decision. And that's I, yeah, I, I got to be honest. He, he, yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating Sorry. to see a company that you know could succeed and do all this stuff, and they're just so you know reluctant to do it just because of yeah. what for reasons unbeknownst to us. But anyway, Stephen, we hope that that answers. So your we question. agree that Nintendo is the one that needs the most help from us. Yes, and and, and they and it's the easiest fix probably of yes. all of them. Frankly, it's it literally Nintendo. stop stop putting <laughs> stop putting the control pad in there. Maybe. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Stephen, we hope that answers your question. Thanks as always for listening and submitting uh, your questions to us. If you have a question that you want to 
us answer on an upcoming episode of the show, feel free to send it our way via Twitter at Epic Battle Axe. You could also follow us on YouTube slash Epic Battle Axe, where we have our daily podcast Monday through Friday. Um, and on EpicBattleAxe.com, you can see them there too. And also catch the weekend wrap up edition uh, with even more bonus content DLC. It is on the disc, but we include it only at the end of the week. So, anyway, hope everybody uh, has a great Tuesday. It is free. <laughs> yes. And enjoy playing Destiny. Uh, enjoy that amazing <laughs> Apple announcement that we'll address at some point in the future. And have a great day. Peace. Oh my God, it's amazing. It's an iPhone so big it takes three hands to use. <laughs> Hooray! Just what I always wanted. Yeah.